Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at using non-drums in order to create a drum pattern. We're going to be doing this essentially like playing air drums, and we're going to take the sounds that we do when we hit just any regular old everyday object and convert it into a drum part. So you could use your hands on your legs, you could use drumsticks on pans, you could use anything you want. The key here is just to record each track semi-cleanly with each microphone you're using. That way we can analyze it and convert them into drummer parts later. So let me break this down and show you how this works. We're going to be using the drum doubler for this technique. Super cool tool built right into Logic. I think that if you haven't used this before, you're going to see some huge benefit to it. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I've got three different tracks, one for kick, one for snare, one for hi-hat, just to demonstrate a little bit about this. And I've got two different microphones attached. We can't do it all simultaneously, but I'm going to use one microphone for the kick. That's this mic one. And then the track two is going to be for the snare. And I could do this in any number of ways. I could uh, bang on my knees. I could clap different things. I could hit pans and put microphones inside the pans. There's a ton of ways to do this. For this today, I'm just going to do a little scratch on the actual microphone uh, grill case. Not a sound we like to hear most of the time, but it's unobtrusive. It doesn't hurt the microphone. We're not wailing on it. We're just tapping it. And we're going to record each of those. It gives good isolation, uh, so we don't have to worry about getting that much bleed between them. I am going to use a click. We could use adapt tempo, but I don't trust my uh, tempo stuff reaching to microphones and things. So we're not going to worry about that. But let's go ahead, record on both of these tracks. There's that one. And here's this one. And we'll do a count in on the pattern. Something simple, simple as it gets. Okay, super simple pattern. Let's go back now and add a little bit of the hi-hat here. And we could actually use some of our quantization tools to line this up, which we will be doing after we have uh, the whole thing done here. But we're going to use them as they are for the moment. I just trimmed it down so we can loop. Now I'm going to take the first one here. Under track, we have the option that says, well, let's see, replace or double drum track. Control D. That's what we're using. And this provides a list of all of these kicks which we have available inside Logic. We're using replacement, not doubling, because I don't want to double. If we were using, for instance, if I had a drummer I was recording in the studio and I didn't really like their kick as much as I could, I could just double it and add more oomph to it. But in this case, we don't like the sound of the hitting the, the microphone, so we're actually going to turn it off in the end. So let's preview this. You see we have some other things there, but let's just go with the default one for now. So that's going to mute the original track and just add the secondary one. Now, I'm going to come into the second one, Control D. This time it's Snare Preview.
You can hear a lot of good snares, but interesting ones. Some of them are better for doubling than others. We'll do with 11 for a minute. Okay. And then the last one, Control D that, this isn't anything. It's a, uh, we have other category. And then I'm going to come down here and choose which of these we want for this. So we're going to do the closed hi hat. We're going to have to change the threshold so all of them hit. Even that first one. We might have to add that one ourselves. Okay, so. Let's just set that. It's not triggering the right note there. And even now you can see it has an EXS loaded. So I'm just going to change this out real quick so I can make sure we're getting what we want to for the drum kit designer. And then we'll combine all of these in just a moment. But So we're going to do this note there. which that's the one it's on. Let's zoom out for a second. Use my velocity tool. Ramp these up a little bit. You can see it gathered my velocity data from the microphone taps and everything. Okay, so let's move these all together. Because what we're gonna do now is actually come through with a glue tool and we are gonna glue those into one and now with this one, we could use our drum kit designer, which I really like. And then one of the most important steps, actually, before we do the quantize here, let's just um, re-add in that initial one that was a little soft. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to put on quantization. Could we have gotten there a lot easier just playing on a keyboard? Maybe. Uh, but I'm not doing a complex beat. I'm demonstrating how this works. You can actually do some really complicated things, which may be a lot harder if you're using a keyboard or don't have any other percussion instruments with you. You could do this with uh, different types of auxiliary percussion or shakers or whatever. This is just an easy way to use our input and turn it into usable percussion tracks. After we have this, of course, we can layer in other instruments and add them on however we want. And so it's a great way to be able to then start combining things, adding things in however we need them to be. Super effective, super powerful. And as you can see, even though there were a couple steps here, it wasn't that complicated. Okay, 
That's all we're going to do for this. Hope you enjoyed this. We're going to look at another option with using our own body or own outside of logic tools to create some of the parts inside with some pitch things. For instance, singing a bass part or a melody part. But we're going to get to that in another video. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope you're staying safe. Look for some more videos coming out later in the week.